Hey guys, I've been experimenting with a lot of old operating systems, mostly installing them on these 512 meg compact flashcards. While I have a fair number of them, I do have a limited quantity, and a lot of them are actually tied up with installations of DOS 5 or DOS 622, which is really kind of a waste. DOS only takes up a small portion of the drive, so I'm going to do a fresh install of DOS 622 and all of my typical utilities on one of these 64 meg cards, and then I'm going to copy it over to a couple of 32 megs. That way I can free up some of my 512 meg cards for more interesting projects. So let's get these installed in the system, and we'll pop into BIOS. Now I don't know the cylinder head and sector information for these drives, so I'm not going to add them into BIOS yet. So let's set both of those drives to none, and we'll boot from my utilities floppy. Now on that floppy I have a copy of IDE info. If I run that program, it'll show me the cylinder head and sector per track for both of those devices. I have a 64 meg and a 32 meg in the system at the moment. Let's pop back into BIOS and add that info. 490 cylinders, 8 heads, and 32 sectors per track for the big drive. And 490, 4, and 32 for the little guy. And if I reboot and go back into DOS, now I've already gone into FDisk and removed the partition. DOS setup actually created a partition for me and then offered to reboot. After the reboot, of course, it did a format and initiated a fresh install of DOS. Now what I didn't notice was that it actually partitioned both drives for me. By the way, if you want to see the partitioning procedure, check out my video on installing DOS 3.3. Yeah, it's a different version of DOS, but the principle is all the same. So we'll speed through this installation of DOS. And remove the disk. And reboot. Now at this point, of course, I installed a bunch of other software off-camera. So let's take a look at the syntax for xcopy. We're going to copy from the C drive to the D drive. Now there's nothing on that D drive, so we probably don't need that slash Y. I'm going to throw it on there just in case. We do want to preserve the attributes of the files, so we need the slash A. I don't think there's any empty subdirectories, but we'll throw a slash E on there just to be sure. And last, we want to verify the copy, make sure everything worked properly. Now this will go fairly quickly since we're going from compact flash to compact flash. Oh, by the way, if you're trying this at home, very good point, the compact flash adapters have a jumper on them to specify master or slave. Obviously your boot device has to be the master and the drive you're copying to is going to be the slave. And once that's complete, we can take a look on the D drive and all those programs appear to have been copied successfully. Now that D drive is probably not bootable yet, so I'm going to issue a sys command just to be sure. So let's remove that 64 meg compact flash, and we'll put the 32 meg in its place. We'll pop into BIOS and update the parameters to reflect that. And let's see what happens when I reboot. OK, 
Okay, we've got no ROM basic system halted. The system actually tried to boot to the drive. When it couldn't find a boot device, it tried to load basic from the ROM. This ROM doesn't have basic, so it failed. So let's boot from a floppy. We'll take a look and see what might be missing. If I go into FDisk, we see the problem right away. No partitions are set active on this drive. Now when the setup program made this partition, it was assuming this would be a secondary drive, not a boot device, so it didn't make the partition active. So we'll simply set the active flag on that drive. And now if I reboot, we're loaded into DOS. Now at this point, I could repeat the procedure with another 32 meg drive, so I have multiple copies of DOS. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below if you anticipated that FDisk problem. And as always, thanks for watching.